Gimme Chocolate, specifically dark chocolate with 70% cacao and a little bit of sea salt because it's so good. Sidebar, what's your favorite chocolate? Leave me a comment down below. And on that note, if you haven't already, hit those like and subscribe buttons as it really does help support the channel. All right, focus vertigo. Gimme Chocolate coming in at a blistering 220 beats per minute is the fastest song in all of BeatStar. Like, by a mile, no other song comes remotely close. And that's one of the reasons why it's considered one of the hardest extremes in the game, and particularly challenging for players who elect to play in thumb style, some of the moves can be quite tough. But don't worry, I'll break those down in today's tutorial. On the sync front, I got this diamond perfect on my base sync value with no adjustments necessary. As a clarifying point, someone's base sync is not necessarily the same thing as the default 30 millisecond out of box sync, if you will, that BeatStar starts off every player at. When I talk about base sync in my video tutorials, I'm referring to the value that a player gets when they go through the exercise of properly calibrating their device. And as a reminder, I teach a methodology in another video tutorial to which I'll leave a link in the description below. Now the track wastes no time blasting us in the face with these rapid fire eighth note guitar riffs. And again, this is 220 beats per minute, so these are eighth notes here. The thing to keep in mind is that they are repetitive and they lead with a natural left thumb, so make sure you're doing that to score consistently. So I'll stop here in section two to go over the strategy that I found most effective to play these notes that are charted along to the vocals. Now this is the first tutorial I've done that contain what a lot of the community like to refer to as micro tiles or quick notes. Can you hear the air quotes from behind my mic? So why the sarcasm? Well, I say it that way because I think a trap that a lot of players fall into is that when they see these that look visually different, they assume they need to be played special or differently, and then they freak out when they come across the screen and it results in them tanking a run or dropping a multiplier in their score. In reality, all this is is a visual compression of the black area around the center line of a note when BeatStar needs to smush several notes together in the same lane so that they fit rhythmically the way they're supposed to. So as an illustration, in Gimme Chocolate, these are all eighth notes that are played at the same tempo. So the guitar riffs in stage one are exactly the same tempo as the eighth notes in stage two along with the vocals. They're not different from a tempo standpoint. So that's my big pro tip for you in general when you see these kinds of notes. Now with respect to this song, how do you play it? Well, of all the different permutations of right, left, right, 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 left, 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 right, etc. I found two that make the most sense, and it's really up to the player's preference on which one works best for you. The first is an alternating thumb style. Now these vocals are repeated in stage two, four, and five, and they're mirror imaged. So depending on where you're at in the track, this will look like right, left, right, or left, right, left when using this method. And the second method, which is what I prefer and what you see in the Diamond Perfect video, is to use the same thumb to strike all three notes in the same lane. So which one do you pick? Well, I recommend method one, the alternating style, for players who struggle to maintain consistent rhythm with the same thumb in the same lane over and over again. Now this does come at a cost at requiring slightly higher accuracy for the next leading thumb to hop across two lanes to strike the next note with accuracy and not whiff in the middle lane which will tank your run. I recommend method two for players who have built up the chops for consistent notes in a single lane because it allows you to stay parked in the left and right lanes with both thumbs and mitigates against any accuracy or even dropped input issues in my opinion. Now I'm going to combine the end of stage two and the beginning of stage three because it's the same musical passage. Now it should be pretty obvious that the notes here are charted along to Baby Metal's vocals, but I do have two key tips that I'll articulate in this section. Tip number one is to play all swipes in the middle lane with your dominant thumb. So for me, you'll see me play everything except for the left hand swipes with my right thumb because it allows me to maintain consistent tempo with my non-dominant left thumb in the left lane. 
And the second tip is to always play the last two notes of this little phrase with your left thumb, regardless of which hand is most dominant. And the reason is due to hold tick scoring. I found that when I try to play two right notes with a left, I drop a tick. And we all know what that feels like when you miss a diamond perfect because you miss a tick. And we're just not going to go there for an extreme like this. So just do yourself a favor and hit those with your left thumb. The end of stage three brings us this straightforward heavy metal guitar riff. Just be mindful of the swipes and the double taps can be particularly tricky for the thumb that hits the middle note just before the double tap. Now there's no hack or trick here. It's just something to be aware of that you may need to work on your skill making that quick hop in succession. Moving into section four, we're back to those vocals that lead to the chorus, and while it's a slightly different iteration from before, the same method one and method two strategies apply. Now in fact, it's slightly easier because there are some swipes mixed in compared to the notes from before, but again, use whichever method that you find most comfortable. Section four starts off with the same chorus as before, and it's slightly additive in that the holds are no longer in just the right lane, they're also added to the left lane, but these are more forgiving and lead to a natural right-left progression off those holds. Moving through stage four, we have some light-hearted syncopation to the vocals. The big tip here is to not rush ahead of baby metal singing. Finishing out stage four, we're charted to the heavy metal synth line, where you just need to be mindful of the tricky little swipes mixed in, and the groupings of three notes in the left lane now will both work with method one or method two, your preference. All right, stage five solo time. So I'm gonna make a few pit stops along the way to explain what I found most effective to attack this solo. And I'll also explain some techniques that will be useful for other extreme songs in your Beatstar journey as well. Now before we dive in, Baby Metal's guitarists are actually playing 16th note phrases at 220 BPM, which is just insane. But from a charting standpoint, we're still sticking to the 8th note rhythms that we had before. So don't be fooled between what you hear and what's actually charted on the screen, because we don't have the capability to play notes that fast in this game. In the first part of the solo, I really recommend playing this as I'm doing on the screen with swipes in the right thumb and the remaining two on the left thumb. The reason being, it's a little awkward to make tiny little circles with your right hand thumb trying to go swipe note, swipe note. So I found the best consistency in scoring when I used this method and I recommend it for you too. Finishing off this little part of the solo, the charting deviates from everything moving up and to the left into a left, right, and back again through the middle lane phrase, but still keeps the swipes in the right hand lane. Now, I personally found it very awkward to try and do three consecutive right thumb notes in the middle lane, going right lane swipe and back to the middle lane on that same right thumb. To combat that unnatural feeling, I'm demoing for you a technique that I like to call sweeping. Now why sweep? Well, I used to play tenor drums in a drum line in college, and when you go between two drums with the same stick quickly, that's a technique called sweeping there, and that's kind of what you're doing with your thumbs here, so we're just gonna go with that name. So to execute this technique, you take two right thumb notes starting in the middle, moving out to the right, and then two left hand notes starting in the middle and moving out to your left, alternating right, right, left, left, accordingly, moving from the inside and sweeping out. Now this of course will take some practice to get used to, but this is a really valuable technique to have in your BeatStar toolbox as a thumb style player. And the reason is because BeatStar loves to chart left, middle, right, middle, left notation in lots of their songs. And when the charting shows up with little tricks in it, like these swipes, or if it's really fast, it can be tough to smash out a lot of dominant thumb moves. As another notable example, I play the whole wiggle wiggle section in Sexy and I Know It entirely with sweeping technique, so it really does help in other songs as well. 
Moving on in the solo, you'll see that I do away with the sweeping and go to three consecutive right hand notes. Now the reason I can get away with this is these eighth notes aren't too fast for my chops and the swipes are gone. But if you're in a scenario where this is too speedy for you, I really recommend continuing with that sweep technique. Moving on further through the solo, the charting is tricky, but is pretty logical between left and right thumbs, including these doubles that I do on the right. Now that's at least until you get here, where we have a little staircase of six notes with three doubles going from left to right. So what's the best way to tackle this little beast? Well, again, the answer is, it depends. I'll resurrect the method one alternating thumb style and method two same thumb style conversation as before. Now to be honest, alternating thumb style does make a lot of sense and it flows logically if that's what works best for you. I had two attempts at it with this method and one was a dropped input and one I missed the lane on. And you can imagine having an entirely diamond perfect run up to this point. Yeah, it makes you wanna change your strategy real quick. So only because I have the chops for it, you'll see that I elected for single style and smashed out four consecutive right hand notes going left, left, right, 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 up the staircase accordingly. So if you have the speed, this is a viable strategy for you too. In the last part of the solo, we do have some hold swipes, but they're very much in time and the swipe portions are on beat with the rest of the notes that follow in the left hand lane. If this isn't working for you, it might be an indicator that your sync is off because the arrows should follow in time along with the rest of the notes. At the very end, we're back to that vocal pattern where again, you have two options at your disposal in thumb style. And so long as you maintain that eighth note rhythm, you will have conquered Gimme Chocolate, well done. So this tutorial was a bit longer, but I felt that some tips and tricks within would be really valuable for other areas of your BeatStar journey. What did you think? Leave me a comment down below. And as always, like and subscribe to support the channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.